Let's talk about the relationship of ATP with catabolic, anabolic, endergonic, and exergonic reactions. We'll start with the structure of ATP. ATP is made of an adenine, which is a double ring nitrogenous base. That adenine is bound to a pentose or 5-carbon ring sugar called ribose. So there's ribose. Together, these are known as adenosine. Then, a string of three phosphate groups are bound to the ribose. Remember, phosphate is made of a phosphorus and three oxygens. It's highly electronegative, so the, those three phosphates are pretty uncomfortable sitting next to each other. So it's really easy for the bond between the second and third phosphates to break and release energy that's stored in that bond. What you're left with is an ADP and an inorganic phosphate group. This is all happening basically all the time. The bond breaks, the bond reforms, the bond breaks, the bond reforms. So next, let's talk about the reactions. First, catabolic reactions. So there's the bond breaking and reforming. Catabolic reactions. Catabolic reactions are the breaking down of things. Typically polymers to monomers, but the breakdown of glucose to CO2 in cellular respiration is another example. Generally, we eat food because it's delicious, but to our bodies, it's chemical energy that's waiting to be released. So the body breaks the food down and releases the free energy that it captures by transforming ADP in the phosphate group to an ATP. When the body needs to do work or when the body needs to build something like a protein, this would be your anabolic example, the bond is broken and releases energy. So there's anabolic. Anabolic is for building things and it consumes energy. This is known as the ATP-ADP cycle. It's happening all the time in our cells. It's so important to our cells that you have to think, like, each cell contains about a billion of these molecules, and it's going to break them all down and reform them every few minutes. Well, that's really, really amazing, and it's a testament to how important this molecule is.